presenter of the short presentations, but not the last presenter of the event today. And I would like to um, introduce to you Kava Nazemi. So, Professor Nazemi is from the University of Applied Science in Darmstadt, and he will tell us about the visual trend analytics in digital libraries. Thank you very much for the introduction. <coughs> and, uh, thank you for the invitation to present my topic here. It's not so so related to information retrieval in the first when you, when you listen to the topic or, or when you the topic visual trend analytics it's not it has nothing to do with search engines and relevance of big bibliographic entries but we will see that has something to do with that um, I want to short introduce visual analytics at all if you don't know that because visual analytics is the, the a combination of the coupling of uh, information retrieval methods or machine learning methods or NLP methods with interactive visualizations and that's it and what we have tried to do is just to find out if we can gather emerging technologies out of digital libraries we have this kind of motivation and that, that we have increasing development of new technologies, methods, approaches, algorithms, for example, in AI and machine learning and products, materials and so on. And these are exploited in different in different areas, domains, for example, in business intelligence, technology, innovation management, healthcare and so on. And for many companies, the early awareness of technological developments is very important that's why and that's the reason why so many camp companies and enterprises have already such kind of innovation centers they came up and tried to find out in a very early step in a very early stage which technologies will be in future relevant and that's a, another measurement of relevance that could be considered perhaps <laughs> not in your study <coughs> so, the stages of technological awareness is like this, is first of all, commonly, the first steps are in research and development. You have that kind of algorithms, for example, LSTM, that is used in kind of every mobile phone that you're using with speech recognition and it's but the first publication from two was a publication in research and development and you have the patents but they are they have a longer term technological term and you have the B2C uh, communication what is commonly used in social networks and so on the product and the technology is already already on the market so you don't have to, you don't get the early stages out of it. So the best resources or data resources are really the digital libraries, the scientific publications. <coughs> we have distributed data in various digital library resources. Um, here I'm going to show you today the example of the DVLP because DVLP has no information about about such short information about author, title, and so on, and no abstracts, no full text, and you can gather or m uh, extract no information out of DBLP itself. So that's why I'm going to show you this example with DBLP. Um, and the main question that 
we have uh, worked out with our partners for when have technologies or topics emerge and when established and historical data where are the key players and key locations where the te technologies are our innovations and who are the key players which technologies and topics are relevant and how will the technologies probably evolve in the next years and we are talking now about predictions the research goal was to integrate, integrate integrating information from heterogeneous resources mining information with different mining methods i will show you illustrate today only just a probabilistic model but we have already implemented machine learning methods and nlp methods and tried to find out which methods are fitting best because word stemming for example is uh, reducing information while using for such kind of uh, uh, text mining algorithms with uh, latin directly allocation or something or lsa um, and uh, part of speech taking or something like that this nlp methods can reduce information and um, of course visualizing information from, for trend analysis and, uh, and exploration of trends So the targeted solution should be a model for gathering trends from heterogeneous library data sources for interactive visual, visual anal analytics or analysis. The combination of visual layouts with data mining approaches, in this case with probabilistic approaches for analyzing trends, a model for assisted search that enables to explore an unknown domain, similar to that what we heard today about uh, synonyms, but we are not in this case we are not using synonyms because it is not a linguistic approach and to make one sentence out of it is a current should be a current model for the entire transformation of textual and semi, semi annotated data from various data sources to aspect oriented visualization for supporting the trend analysis process and we already saw a uh, Paper you showed a paper from Pirelli and Stuart Cobb, and this is one of the based. This model is based of one of the uh, most uh, uh, famous work of Cobb. Two, Cobb, McKinley, and Schneiderman have defined the information visualization pipeline of the process, and we have enhanced that this process. You see, the steps, this data enrichment. We have kind of data. They come now from, in our case, in this case, from DVLP, and we have the data integration processes, the data mining, and of course, we have our own search engine in this data, so you're able to search in, the, in this. Um, the enriched data are then transformed, mapped, visual orchestrated, and the human can interact with that. So, I'm checking this showing the short the steps of data integration and so on um, we have the dvlp data we have no further information we gather through web mining methods data enrichment full texts and abstracts with uh, through ieee acm computer arc and springer and um, try to find the try to fill out or enrich the inf information with those databases um, in this case, data data enrichment or, or extraction of, of information is performed by probabilistic models, by two models that are a little bit combined with each other. Then we are transforming the data. We have aspect-oriented data models for each case. Aspect-oriented, and that t uh, that and that means that you have kind of semantic model that shows you the semantic correlationships, for example, co-auto correlations or citation graphs. Uh, we have the temporal models that shows you which, how the temporal spread of publications were, and uh, you have kind of geographical model, and of course you have that kind of topic models that were generated or extracted from the data. And you have 
on the visualization side you have exactly the same kind of data you're mapping the data to visual structures and uh, try to find the best fitting best fitting visual inter interactive visual representation for that kind of data so we talked about search and analysis process and we have two different processes defined in our in this visual interactive systems first of all you start with a search you get an overview after the search that's that's the commonly the way that search works or not you, you get an overview whether it's a SERPs in the, on one, one side and then you go through zoom and filter that's something that you click and or click not or whatever and can have the show context on expand or demand or take a look on the details on demand and this is a way how you can start uh, for example with our system you see that we have not only integrated DBLP but all the Eurographics the database of Eurographics Association and Springer but uh, that because these were easy to integrate and DBLP was a little bit more difficult so these were the search terms that were uh, typed in in our systems so the user can have that kind of search but it is the formulation ability of human that is required here he has to formulate something a search term and then he gets an overview kind of overview in this case a kind of um, uh, temporal spread of his search term search term in this case he searched for information visualization and he gets all the publications of information visualization we have about six thousand six thousand seven hundred and uh, seventy five publications with that term in our in DBLP and the time as I made the screenshot the other case round is if you start with an overview you can if you don't know about if you don't know how to formulate something if you start for example with your PhD thesis and you want to have a you want to have a take a look what is now trendy what is now cool and you have now such kind of uh, overview and that's a metaphor that is a little kind of applied from Schneiderman um, Schneiderman's information seeking mantra overview zoom and filter but it's now show context details on demand and you can of course search thereafter and talking about relevancy and relevance that's another kind of relevance that shows you what the slopes and I saw the regression slopes and one slide of uh, I think it was Berlin um, we have now here from the entire database of the DVLP and all the terms that are appearing in the full text and abstracts gathered the phrases and terms that are appearing and have the highest slops in the last years and trying to find out which terms, topics, technologies, approaches are really emerging and you see at this point now in 2019-18 last year yeah, and this year it's deep neural I mean neural deep neural ne learning neural networks machine learning Internet of Things multimodal and graph I was a little bit surprised about graphs um, and you have different kind of uh, ad you have different kind of visual interactions for example you see the temporal spread and you can refine your search you, ha you have the different topics how they appear on and uh, you can compare these topics with each other and you can have the hierarchy of topics which shows you how a term was built up how a topic was built up from which terms and uh, the last uh, screenshot shows you the correlationship without any plotting of lines and so on the correlationship of authors with the, with the years together 
and only one single screen and here have uh, geographical spread of uh, the publication in information visualization and we see that the United States is in the first place and then Germany and China and so on and it gives you an overview about about uh, the information where the publications or where these technologies are emerging but you have of course these all this kind of uh, visualizations are interactive so, so you can click on them you can get the number or you can with a double click for example filter out and you want just have this German publication for example or this United publication from the US we integrated a search and search mechanism a visual search and search mechanism in our tools too that means that you have a search result set but you want to search within your search result set I have defined here three points of interest on the right side uh, but my main search term was information visualization you cannot see it because it's overlapped with the other circles and you have now data mining intelligent and analytics and you can put them together and uh, combine them and see that the combination of data mining and information visualization there you have 336 results there the combination of data mining data mining information visualization and intelligent is there are 18 papers and so on and you can then combine this kind of uh, search and search visual search and search interfaces the last step is the, um, the kind of visual orchestration that means that you don't have only static UI elements it is kind of adaptive user interface and, and uh, it adapts to the demands of the users um, but um, not only this kind of responsive that adapts to, the, to your devices but al also to the to the to your interest if you want to if you say that I want to have it but if you don't want it you the system is not gathering any interaction of you out of uh, your interactions and we have integrated without linguistic methods without semantic methods an assisted search model that works a little bit different like the approach that uh, you may know but perhaps this approach already exists you can say that perhaps I'm not really sure uh, we, we, we get all those topics and we, we take a look the most dominant topic in a search term the most dominant topic and after that the, uh, the from the most dominant topics we one term is not only has not only one topic for example with information visualization we have such kind of topic with data visualization user visual analytics and so on and if a if someone search and that's the are these are not synonyms and if you search for information visualization with our topic phrases and the extraction of the topics you get automatically if you turn off the assisted search model you you get automatically for example visual analytics and uh, data visualization and so on they are, these are not real linguistic synonyms but they are topic related so but the core currency so related to that topic that you have searched and that make it a little bit huger the amount of the search gets greater and you can now interact now I have I have a demo but you have a video and demo too I can send you the link the link is here um, I don't think that the time is enough for showing a demo or showing a demo as you like it do you want take a look on it yeah okay let's click on it do you see something I don't see anything 
Oh, okay, I see it. I have to type in my password. You don't see my password? Wrong no. password. No. Should be. Should be a uh, sun. Can you see it, or is it just because it is? Uh, uh, yeah, it's here. This is the starting starting screen. If you start an application, if you start this application, you see the last searched terms, the most searched terms by the users. It's nothing special, but you have here different kind of uh, other vis visual interfaces. For example, the temporal cloud that we have already see, and we see that it has a little bit changed. Graph is more important right now than in the screenshot that I show you, but. <laughs> Deep learning is still, and machine learning is still of interest. But you have here, of course, you cannot say that I'm not interested in deep neural not networks, uh, but I'm interested, for example, in uh, word and language, and you can take a look on that, and or machine learning, and start to click here. And thereafter, it searches, yeah. We're talking about searching, and it searches and it shows you the temporal spread of machine learning. We see the first publications about 90, 1980s for in DBLP database, not, not really because the first machine learning were very very old, and you have the same faceted list that we have seen on the auto, a kind of uh, faceted list uh, with uh, different. Uh, with the uh, different topics, different types, the years. I cannot see it here really good um, because I see my presentation here on the screen. And uh, you see the countries, in which countries were the most publication. You, you, can, you can now, uh, for example, say that you're interested in only German, only German uh, publications and uh, you want to s take a look on how on the topics on the topics related to machine learning where German people or German researchers are working in and you see now the, to the first topic is of course machine learning itself you can put it away and you see that the classification classification is very pretty interesting for all this researchers it's the most interesting topic in Germany in terms of machine learning and by double clicking this you get into this hierarchy and see for example that state of the art is not interesting for you but for example support vector machine attention and research and um, and the topics and sentiment you can choose other other features here to other topics here too and um, for example take a look on what is what is about uh, classification we have now in this side we have now classification topic sentiment and Germany and I just want to have the publication about this and we have now out of 10 or 14,000 or 15,000 publications, just a few number of publications that are really related to this case. And you can take a look if you want to, to the authors, yeah. to the authors and, and to the co-author relationships of them and um, who has published with Boom, more, and so on. And this was a, another facet. So, and 
you can and you can combine your facets for example here now I'm combining it with the R uh, logical R and say that I want to see the United States publications too and you see now that the role of Germany goes on the corner and uh, the most popular one guy who published in the area of machine learning was this guy with this co-authors this is just a small part of the, his co-authors and you can have the correlation, the intercorrelationship. If you go into that, you see with whom they have connect or were connected with each other. And with this kind of search, with this kind of search interface, it is it is another kind of metaphor because you have you're searching here, you're exploring here, you're looking up, and and you have the investigation process too. Uh, you have just totally different user experience we talked today about user experience too and I think we talk about the entire processes that we are using here today <coughs> beginning from information retrieval to information behavior and um, relevance of information there are different matrix for, for the relevance and that's it if you like to play with that just contact me I'm giving you a passport for interacting with the software and there are different there are several versions for different tasks and uh, you can perhaps um, you can perhaps um, choose one you can create dashboards for example or compare make comparison tasks and so on so I, what did I try to show you I tried to show you a current model for visual trend analytics that is something that is for sp of special interest right now um, with uh, the different stages of data enrichment data mining data modeling visual mapping or the different data models that we have created and uh, with the integrated search and with the visual search and the search and search and the assisted search and um, the model was applied in real application scenarios for different enterprises they are using it for consultancy and for technology uh, detection for early technological detection I'm thanking you very much for your attention and uh, feel free to ask something if you want to Yes, <coughs> thank you. And of course, are there any questions? Yeah. yeah thank you very much. Um, just uh, got um, two questions because I don't know if I uh, really uh, got it correctly. Um, so one question is, um, what's the databases you're working on? So. Uh, where, where, where does the data come from? The main database is the DBLP. Do you know that? It's just a repository for computer yeah. science. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The DBLP. But we are enriching the data with several databases, for example, ACM, Springer, IEEE, uh, and yeah, so yeah, So yeah, it's, it's integrating about. with yeah. web mining methods. Yeah. Uh, okay. And the other question is um, that the semantics and topics of um, um, the data you receive them by um, um, computer algorithms. It's not uh, some kind of um, intellectual metadata, me metadata production you, you did. It's just some um, computer algorithms which uh, yeah, yeah, we are took them out. Yeah. We have just generated them by our, by our, by our own. Yeah. Hmm. The semantics is generated by our own. It's something that we have integrated into the algorithms that you have such kind of uh, of uh, semantics. There are further semantics to that I couldn't show you because of the visual capacity of this uh, visual interface. But uh, you can, for example, have uh, things like things like uh, Crossref, mm -hmm. and we use Crossref, for example, for citation, and uh, use it as measure for relevancy of papers too. And um, this is something that is integrated. It's semantically 
connected to the data, but not um, in this case. Okay, thank you. Sam, we have another question. Hi, thank you for your talk. I guess it's a follow-up on this. Um, have you, or do you incorporate open source databases, like academic open source, open humanities, or other types of? Yes, yeah, yeah, of a course. And they are also part of this? Yeah, 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 of course, yeah. We have now integrated the entire Springer Nature database, that the open, open access, not the open source. App and access, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the open access part of Springer Nature. Um, we're trying now to do that the same with Axif and so on. But the, the problem is that you are, you're not allowed to, to have the CC by NC licensing of the data. You're not allowed to, 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 to sell it for companies and so on. So we're working together with some, some uh, for example, with the Technische Informationsbibliothek Hannover and uh, with the with the with the VTE and with the Genios, with Springer, we're trying to work with them together to get the something out. At Fraunhofer, we had the, I was several years at Fraunhofer. We worked with TEV with the Hannover together. Now we are just uh, trying to do that with uh, Springer and uh, other bigger um, data provider and data, data broker. There are several data broker who were buying and selling data. Did here's a question. Hi, I have a question for the trend analysis. Um, in general, the volume of publications is growing uh, yeah, on time. So do you have any correction factors yeah, in there yeah, to see uh, what is, yeah, okay. You have a kind of normalization that is always integrated. So you're absolutely right. Okay. It was I the just first saw the absolute numbers on the on the graph, so I, that's why I was thinking. Yeah. What kind yeah. of correction is there? No, there is a there is a mm -hmm. normalization. The slabs are normalized to each slab. Mm -hmm. It's a five-year interval mm -hmm. that is slab uh, that is uh, normalized with the number of publications in this year or in the in this time period. Mm -hmm. But we are normalizing for each year. And are you? As, re as a reference, are you using like the total volume uh, of publications in that year, or is it like a uh, um, total volume of publications in that area? Um, the like total for publication okay. of the entire database, in this case, the GBLP database. The next step will be that you, that we are going to separate it on an industrial sector model, and that's a, this partially integrated that you have a different kind of industrial sectors or sectors of domains, for example, policy, computer science, information science, and so on. And there's no difference between computer science and different information science. I mean, that's pretty different to separate that's these two domains. But this is something that we are trying to do right now. And uh, healthcare, for example, that's a good, you have a pretty great database and, and healthcare, pretty great data in e-commerce, and uh, you can you can take this mm -hmm. uh, different domains and make this sectors out of it with machine learning methods, and uh, trying to train the data so that you know in which sector you are now, and open for the company's new market segments. Yeah. yeah. So, is there any last question? Okay, so then, thank you again for your thank presentation. You Thanks a lot.